Welcome back, attractive and well-educated watchers, to Medieval Dynasty on Riverside. Last time we left off, we were doing a bunch of missions. This time, we're going to see if we can expand our farm a little bit, or, you know, at least do something to expand our dynasty a little bit. Maybe get a person coming. We don't know. We'll see what, we'll see what goes on. No, yeah, we were, we were going to make a thing. Yeah, don't worry. We got this. All right, yeah, when we came back from it, there's some rocks and, and, uh... Right, we have ten logs, because we needed ten logs. Because we needed ten logs to make our resource storage, which is gonna go... Oh, it's a rabbit. We're not gonna kill that rabbit right now. Uh, well, I mean, if, if it goes into the trap, we'll definitely kill it, but that's because it will die of its own stupidity. Uh, we're gonna stick our resource, resource storage right, yeah, right up here against the thing. So if you're excited to see what happens today, remember to like, subscribe, do all those other lovely things that help support the channel. Go on down to our link tree, link in the description, hit up all the other lovely places that we do stuff. Share this video around, and if you're an especially an attractive and well-educated watcher, go on down to our Patreon and the link tree in the description. And pledge even just one dollar a month to help support the cause. And join the Mighty Mighty Ranks of Mike the Microphone, our number one patron of all time, and Tolpenzer, our number one watcher of all time, and get your name in the game. Probably even this game. Uh, storages. Resource storage. Yes, the resource storage, as we determined in the last, uh, at Lakeside, it big. Resource storage, it big. Um, so, yeah, right there, that looks about right. Kablam! Yeah, it really big. And we should have built it first, but we couldn't build it on that steep of thing. So now this is going to be our thing. Good. Good, good. It's planed out just right. Oh, nice little... Oh, reasonably squarish shaped place. Man, okay. Well, we are going to have to... We're going to have to do a lot. Fortunately, we have built quite a stockpile already. Or so we hoped. Okay, yeah, no, it's it's reasonable. Let's... This is... I mean, this isn't going to do, like, everything for us, but... You, again, you want to put your log up... First, on that, just, just saying, just been trying to say that for many episodes now, you, you put your frame up and then you thatch your frame. It's, we, come on guys, we've done this, we've done this at least enough times. Oh, it's start, it's gonna look so good. Mmm, pretty excited about this, not gonna lie. Alright, and then... Oh! Oh! No! Oh! Me, 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 me! It's... <laughs> Apparently it's super easy, barely an inconvenience to make a new one. <laughs> But it's, it's still a great inconvenience all the same. Alright. So now, we need to go out and make a lot of straw. This is fine. Uh, yeah, okay, there it is. We knew we had, we knew we had some, once again, this is not... How straw actually works if you are in a survival situation and you want to get straw our biggest recommendation to you is to construct a cutting tool and then gather thatch and straw from local tall grasses uh, preferably ones that are already dry uh, these reeds would take days to dry and might even go moldy if you don't have a warm weather environment to take care of so, do yourself a favor and wait for your your straw, your grass, because straw is made of grass, not reeds. Uh, make sure to not drink water straight from a slow-moving river. A very important, that rule. And um, get your straw from grass, not reeds. Reeds are useful for other things, but they aren't useful for this. 
at least not without warm weather uh, and a good place to dry things out on. Well, we do that. We're we're hoping you're enjoying the uh, spectacle of us picking reeds superfluously while we tell you about why, in reality, you shouldn't pick reeds in a survival situation. Uh, however, it is important to remember that allegedly cattails have edible tubers once cooked. However, we have gathered from other survivalists that they are so bitter that they may inspire you to vomit. So we opt not to eat cattail tubers uh, and instead use them for other things. Which we may or may not explain at some point, but right now we're far too invested in this. Alright, so at the very least, let's get our thatch up. Because after all, you would want to, once you have your structure laid out, get your roof up first and foremost. My god, that's beautiful. Because it's easier to work under a roof than, you know, on, on your walls under a roof that you've already built than to uh, work, you know, in the middle of nowhere with all that work to do. Oh, look at that. Nice. Just what we were hoping for. Unless... Yeah! Took care of that stomp. Gave it what for? Okay, just making sure we're not getting snuck up on by no demon wolf or whatever. You know what we need? We probably need to eat something. We have an oat roll. There we go. That does the job. That oat roll right there like Mama used to make. I'll stomp that up. Oh! It did not try to Valheim us. Alright, yeah, we'll just... We'll just leave you there for now, because we are already overloaded. We're not too overloaded, we can still walk, that's the good thing. Yeah, looking at it from a distance, this looks pretty nice. This is like a thing that we could work with. Uh, and then the walls pop on up, there you go. And how much we want to bet it's just going to be super difficult for us at some point. It's going to like, make the upper section right here impossible to make or something. Something with a roof, we bet. How much do you want to bet? Sure. We guess. Yeah, and once again, you don't want to put the sticks up because the waddle is the frame, or is the wall that attaches to your frame, so this, that would not work, <laughs> um, so, yeah, don't, don't do that, but, I mean, this is a video game, we suppose, so we'll let it slide this once, but we're not impressed by that, we, we, we want to, to put it in right now that the log should always go before the stick, if you can help it. That being said, this Razamir is a top stunner, and he will get the job done. Heck yeah. So... Alright... Straw is godded. We don't need to worry about straw anymore, so we're going to go put that away. Limited as it is, it is still weight in our inventory. Alright. Actually, quite a bit of weight in our inventory, we bet. Yeah, like five units. Is it kilograms? Are we, are we doing kilograms here? We don't know. Alright. Hello, Miss Moose. Ms. Moose. We don't know. We might have an MBA. Who are we to say? Well, 
That is a shovel. And it do appear that we have lost our original pile. So we're going to slide over here and fell these two trees. Actually, we're just going to fell one and then we're going to fell another one nearby. There we go. Fell this one. Space things out a little bit. That works. Don't get Valheimed. As we've mentioned before, of course, it does not work like that in this game. One minute. This will give us a fair amount of steaks. Apparently not the logs we were looking for. Oh. Jeez, those birch trees are kind of little. Oh. Well, at least we got the stumps. Maybe we should... Oh! Oh! It's our felled tree! Yeah! We knew we'd find you. Well, let's trundle our way on back. Easy does it. Now this right here, this, this is going to help. Might even get it done. In the meantime, we'll grab sticks on the way back. There's an elk, just elking about. Gradually... Making ourselves even slower. Oh, we definitely don't have enough steak. Don't worry. We are gathering up more steak as we go. Fortunately, the wilderness is full of glorious and useful steak on the way to keep us busy as we roll. And we have far too many logs in our inventory, so we will start by dropping one right here. Yeah, we bet that one's going to be the hard one. Boom! Okay, we move slowly faster. ka blam Quality 90s Nickelodeon Entertainment, baby. There we go. Log first. Log first. Log first. Log first. Log first. Whee! Okay, wow, it actually didn't screw everything up. Okay. Yeah. No, this is going good. This is going to be real nice. Not going to have quite enough logs to do the job. Sad but real. I'm just going to... Alright, we're just going to go out and grab a stick real quick when that... When we're done... Come on now, where's a quick stick when you need one? Here's one. Bam. Alright, so we need three more log. Alright. Three more logs, so like one birch tree. We're gonna go over here. Careful there, careful there, don't pass out. I'm gonna remove this birch tree real good. Don't get Valheimed. Again, they don't Valheim in this game, but it's good to keep the thing. We think as time goes by, games are going to probably take the Valheim approach more often. 
and they will assuredly try to kill you with logs and falling trees far more often. And we would approve of that, because that adds spice and reality to a game that isn't actually very difficult or unrealistic and doesn't take away from the game. So, we, we like the Valheim approach. Let's just grab up all these sticks. Oh, yeah. It's about time. It's, it's there. Look at this. Kablam. Oh, yeah. One woodshed! Oh, ho, 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 ho. I don't know how many things we can keep, but our hunting shed is absolutely the next thing that we're going to do. Because hunting, you can get a villager to just feed you forever. And boy, is that like our favorite thing ever. We've constructed the resource shed. Oh, yeah, and we have like skills now and stuff because we... We did things. Yeah, we're definitely going to do survival sense. Alright, so next up... Oh, oh there's more. <laughs> Pardon, sorry about that. We must have really cranked it on. Fast movement in water, nobody cares. Nobody cares about alcohol. Now that's what we're talking about. Slower food and water. Ding, 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 ding. And then we got our woodshed. Okay. Stick fence, sit and stump, stick gate. Nice. Nice. Gonna start being able to... Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, right. Also, management. Storages. Resource storage. Uh, all non-consumable resources gathered by workers are transfer transferred here. So this is gonna be good... We've got a thousand... Okay, it is kilograms. We've got a thousand kilograms that we can uh, store in this storage. Now, we think our next thing we're going to get... I mean, obviously we're going to talk to Sambor at some point, but the, uh, the time lapse for that is literally in years. So, uh, we think our next favorite thing we're going to be doing... Aside from getting a drink and taking a bath... Is... Probably going to be making... Oh, we don't know, doing some gathering or something. We'll find out. Oh, you know what, actually? We're, we're gonna drink. We're gonna bathe. Okay, good, good. Wow, that's actually a lot of reeds. How many can we get away with? Yeah, so... Depending on the types of reeds, like, for example, if you're getting, you know, cottony, fluffy reeds or whatever, the reeds at the top can be dried out and used as kindling. They catch really fast. Um, so if you have those, you know, flossy, cottony ones at the top, you can take them and break them apart. These don't seem to be the cattail-y sort of variety, so we don't know... But, uh, we'll see. We'll see. In between this and the next episode, we'll probably do some research. Oh, yeah, and, and uh, we're not answering questions on why this is on Tuesday instead of Thursday or Friday or whatever. We just like this game. Alright, so that seems like enough reads to do... Literally anything we ever want with them. Like 92 straw now. We're going to go... Yes, we're going to take the stone. We're going to take all, all of the fur. We're going to take that because we're going to want to eat it. We, we, just, we just said all... Okay, good. That's better. Okay, and wool fabric. And daisies, and dandelions, and copper ore. All of it, each and every bit, is going to go in 
to... Geez, oh man, we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, so it's all going to go in here. It's going to be pretty good. Now, how many buildings can we get? It should say in management. Five buildings. That's actually really good. So that means we could, if we so desired, get a little house and put a little person in it. And then get a hunting lodge. And then that would be great. Oh, a signboard. Nice. Okay, those are new. At least as far as we know. Does that go anywhere? No, it's just, just you know, it, you hold it around. Let's get rid of these dandelions and daisies and feathers and fur and sticks and stones and straw and wheat. All right. Oh, and wool fabric. Alright, so now that we've found that, I mean, we suppose it's a pretty decent dish time to go talk to Sambor, we guess. But first we're going to save, because we know for a fact that we always die by wolves on the way to Sambor. Always. Every time. Can't tell you why it always happens, but it do. It's how it do. Can't stand it. Alright. Uh, dynasty reputation, workers, water demand, food demand, wood demand. Okay. So from what we gather, you can actually have people work at your, the woodshed dealy dupe. And uh, that's all good. Okay, there's our bridge that we want. Uh, alright, so get in, hang a right, follow it to the fort, take a left of the fort. Okay. Now this wooden spear is pretty garbage, but we gotta deal with it until... Oh, what's this? Oh, you bet your bonnet we're gonna... Ooh, plum tree seedlings. Gotta plant us some plums. Right. Please don't kill us. Uh, bear. What are you? Oh, you're just a lynx. Oh, jeez. You were scaring us there, buddies. We're about to get turned. Don't worry, we won't attack you. We got no business in it. Uh. Okay. So, we just got to go along this road here. And by and large, it'll get us where we need to go. Okay, as long as we stay on the right roads. Sambor is a pretty far away dude. However, you can get to him. Just always remember to be clean, or else he'll be like, Hell no, you nasty. Uh, and then he won't talk to you, and you'll have to run all the way back to the river, and it will be really stupid. Yup, we know, because we've done it before. And it was really dumb. Really quite very dumb. Alright, also remember don't pass out, because you're too tired. Almost to Sambor. We'll just take the next right, and then we'll get to him. Just gotta not die. Problem is, as we recall correctly, Sambor actually has, like, 
a pair of wolves just waiting outside of his house or whatever, and it's super obnoxious and horrible. And we've actually run up to Sambor with them on our tail, and Sambor has been like, oh, hey, man, well, just don't get yourself killed out there, okay? <laughs> and we've been like, you suck, Sambor. You suck so bad. All right. So it seems like we have found Sambor's home. It's the daytime. There he is. Here is Sambor. Oh, jeez. It looks different. I think you're lost, boy. Look me in the eye and stop shivering for crying out loud. Black and blue. You're Jordan's family, aren't you? Razmir, you must be Sambor. How'd you know that? Uh, and you guys told me part of what now? The pack. Packed. Never heard this idiotic name in my life. We were called the Undying Fist! A whole lot better of a name. You're damn right it is. Because <laughs> I came up with it. Everyone liked it. Sure, he's just jealous about your creativity. Of course he was. Not only about that. My uncle and the pack's adventures together. It's an amazing coincidence, because I would love to spend my life telling old tales by the crackling fire. Oh my, really? No, leave my property and forget where it is. Oh, come on, it will only take a moment. A moment of a moment, of a moment really. Just tell me what my uncle, what was my uncle like? How did you become part of the, the Undying Fist? <laughs> what are you doing in the pack? You don't know what we did? You didn't get to that part yet. Oh, be quiet. Be less annoying. Where should I begin? Right, it all started when Jordan left his home. He was 18 at the time, if I remember correctly. That clever bastard was always too big of a fish for his birthplace, and he knew it. Left as soon as he could. But cleverness at such a young age always means two things. Being arrogant and being hot-headed. Okay, okay. His plan was to set out on a big adventure. That's it. Pretty detailed, huh? A path like that is paved with skeletons of young idiots, but none of them was Jordan. Either way, he was wandering for days. Days soon turned into weeks, and his rations turned to dust. He was useless as a hunter back then, at least, so berries and mushrooms was all he could get. So obviously he needed some coins. He came across the manor with orchards so vast they seemed like an ocean. Jordan hired himself there. A week of backbreaking labor had passed. His hands were covered in blistered skin, red from the scorching sun, knees pulsating from the pain. I must say you're pretty good. Shut up, do you want me to finish? <laughs> you're pretty good at this. Shut up, do you want me to finish where I was? I, oh, right. He was exhausted from all the strenuous work he's done. Went to the lord of the manor with a smile on his face to collect payment. His stomach was already full with fantasies and delights, tr delightful, delicious treats he was dreaming of buying. And all that was ruined by the hand of the lord holding a couple of lousy coins. Jordan was furious. That was merely a fraction of the pay he was supposed to acquire. He was started shouting at the Lord, demanding justice. Peasants were just flies, the Lord. Disgusting, respectable, replaceable insects. And what do you do with a flying insect that buzzes too loud? Struck Jordan's ears with the strength of an ox. Jordan fell to the ground, stunned, and the Lord's guard threw him out of the manor like garbage, stealing his few pathetic coins while doing so. If I may add, it wasn't until evening when Jordan regained his hearing. With it came a fervent thought. Thought of revenge. Your uncle was quite a capable fighter when I met him ten years later, but he wasn't back then. He knew the guards would massacre him if he only came back, so he needed to find another way. Your was always ambitious. Came later. Was me becoming bored of this conversation? No, go... <laughs> oh, come on! The things to do. We'll do him! We'll do him! What do you need? No, tell us! Come on, bro! You won't regret it. Clay deposits, go dig up some clay. Also, Sambor. Okay. Nice. Where are these clay deposits? We'll do that now. Not even joking. I'm not going to steal his planks. Ha ha! He thought this was going to hold us back. Ha! Nice. Wooden deer figurine? Weird. Okay... Please don't kill us, wolf. 
Okay. Uh, uh. Please don't kill us, please don't kill us, please don't kill us, please don't kill us, please don't kill us. Alright, Sambor. You have to tell us more of these mighty stories by the fire. Okay? Here's this clay. All the clay you wanted. Will you finish the story now? Alright, alright. So as I've already said, Yord wasn't too much of a fighter back then. He didn't have any money nor connections. But he had one thing, an unusual ability. See, you, you see from an early age, Jordan was exceptionally good liar. No sweaty palms, no voice cracks, no tells, really. Calm, steady breaths, eye contact all the way. Eventually, he eventually managed to handle any kind of pressure, even in the craziest situation, but it wasn't that at first. He felt no pressure lying, uh, no stress at all. It was as natural from his breathing. He had absolutely no remorse. Listen. He came up with a plan, a plan so immensely veronica and unrealistic that it's really hard to believe it worked so perfectly. At least he, at first he convinced the, convinced the nearby town's tailor to sew him a whole set of clothes worthy of the most wealthy nobleman, the finest of fabrics, silken threads, you name it, horrendously expensive. How did he manage, so how did he manage to afford it, you ask? It's simple, he didn't pay for it. So he stole it, I said no such thing. Eurydon wasn't a thief, not in the traditional meaning of the word at least. Apart from that, did I finish the damn story? Ahem. While wearing his new clothes, he traveled to the castle of the king of that realm and entered it. Okay, okay. So now, so I know, now I know you're making all this up. It's simply impossible. You're absolutely right, it is. It is mad to even consider trying to pull that off. Be Jordan. He just walks straight in. I don't blame you for doubting me. Damn, I would have, I would have been the first to, to doubt a thing like that if I didn't see him doing it hundreds of times later with my own eyes. Anyway, he walked me, walked right into the castle and once there, he followed through with his plan, which was betting his wife. Whose wife? The king's wife! The king's wife? Mm -hmm. So the queen, indeed! Jordan was a killer! What a revenge plot! So let me get this state. The plan was to go to the castle and lay with the queen. Exactly that! You were right. This is the most absurdly idiotic plan I've ever heard. I told you, but it worked like a charm. What worked? What was he accomplishing that? After the lovemaking, he dressed up, deliberately leaving his undergarments on the bedside, and told the queen he'll be right back with some refreshments. Then he went to one of the king's guards and told him that he caught, saw the queen with the company of a strange man sneaking in one of the bedchambers. The guard rushed in and witnessed the queen naked in the bed with a man's clothes right next to her. <laughs> As a loyal servant, the guard reported the matter directly to the king himself, who, as you can probably imagine, became furious to say the least. He couldn't really punish his wife, that would be bad for his uh, reputation, but he could pursue her lover. Unfortunately for him, at this point, Eorn was long gone from the castle, riding a beautiful bay mare he borrowed from the stable into the sunset. You see, the king didn't catch the filthy seducer, but it didn't mean he couldn't track him down and find him. To do so, the only track he could follow was the one that Yordan had left behind, except his undergarments and a pleasurable memory for the queen. His name, not his real name, of course, the name he used when introducing himself was Queen. The Orchard Lords. Precisely. Now you get. Oh no! Oh no! Lord's head must have left, have left the company of his body pretty promptly. He didn't get killed, that wouldn't be Jordan style. The queen begged for his life to be spared, so the king threw him in the dungeon where he spent all the days he had left. Jordan was amazing. Just the power of his wits and speech. Don't get me wrong, the idea about his reasons. Jordan didn't get through all that just because he, of what the lord did to him. You see, the Lord was cruel, merciless brute. He mistreated all of his subjects, killed for fun, raped for sport. People used to call him the Laundry Man because one of his habits was drowning his bastards in the lake right after birth. Ugh, jeez. Jordan needed to stop him, and he did. But that's not the end of the story. After the Lord's capture, someone had to take his place. He didn't have any right to full successors, but then, just with just an uncannily perfect timing came a distant cousin of the lords a charming young man with two different eyes <laughs> oh no he easily acquired all possessions of his sentence relative but he already didn't wa want any of that not for himself so he took only three bags of coins from the treasury and left everything in the hands of the peasants they related he is still probably worshipped there i can tell you that 
One more thing, why three bags, you ask? It's easy, one for the tailor, another for the stableman he took the horse from, and the last one for himself, with the exact amount of coins he was rightfully supposed to earn for his work at the orchard. Nice. Told you Jordan wasn't a thief. And that was that. He mounted his beautiful mare and left the realm, continuing his adventures. At least that's a story he used to tell us, so nothing of that may be true. Ha <laughs> ha! But that's just how it was with Jordan. You and you guess we're talking about, he really does seem surreal. Never met anyone like it, don't get me wrong, he had his flaws, but the things he could do, his tongue wasn't even silver, it was made of pure gold. Don't, what was the purpose of the Undying Fist? Oh, I thought it would be obvious. On that day, Jordan's mission was born. He knew that the spoiled, rotten elites like that were scattered all around the world, draining the life and dignity from the hard-working, simple folk, and that he was capable of stoping them. Stopping, of course. To some extent, at least. That's exactly what he started doing, overthrowing corrupt lords and giving back to the community. He's a hero, a true hero. It wasn't like, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say that. How did you join the pack? Jordan was working solo when he met Unigas. The rat's agile fingers could work where Jordan's tongue didn't. And when they needed someone with talents they were lacking, like strength, manliness, bravery, independence, gallantry, integrity. Right, I get the picture. So they recruited the best there was. I was between jobs at the time, so I gave them a chance, and finally the pack started to really make a difference. But I don't like to brag. Humble to the bone. Thank you for noticing. People at my level don't need to boast about our skills. <laughs> Just like the sun doesn't need to prove it's bright. Anywho, I already spoke more words to you than I did in the last five years to anyone, so it's about time for you to go, and I prefer you don't come back, ever. Yeah, I don't care. Leave now, and in return for giving away my location, deliver this delicious meal to Unigast. It's his favorite, a knuckle sandwich. You know, don't, do you want me to hit him in the face? Did I stutter? No, sir, of course, sir, I'm on my way. Nice! And now we're going to march back in the dark like a coward. Ooh, but fortunately we can march directly south along this path as quickly as possible with our spear straight out and ahead of us, so that if we do get attacked by anything we can run away like a little pansy really, really fast. Yes. A perfect plan. Please don't kill us! Ah, oh, an open clearing. Without wolves, hopefully. Okay. So we can run like a quarter of the way on one quick stamina boost. Let's go. Okay, just gotta keep staying on the road. Stay on the road. Road is safe. Stay on the road. Oh my gracious, please. It's so freaking dark. Oh jeez. Okay, okay. No torch in slot. Doesn't matter. Don't need to. Don't need a torch. Just gotta keep running. Just gotta... Okay, wait here real quick. Oh, we're already halfway there. That's good. If we can just get to the other side, we will be functionally perfect. Yeah, if we can just get to the other side, we'll be able to make our way back. Because we know for a fact... Oh, jeez. Oh, we think that might have been a fox behind us, but we're scared of it. Ah! Deliver knuckle sandwich to Unira. We're going to just, like, pop into Gustovia in the middle of the night because the, uh, the bridge is right there. And we're just going to be like, hey, man, happy morning in the middle of O-Dark 30. Oh, jeez, it's starting to get, like, bright. Wow, that's pretty good, actually. We like that. That's cool. All right, so that's the thing. And that's the old location of Lakeside. Good riddance. It was such a complicated place to build literally anything. And, uh, from here on out, it might even get, like, straight up light, actually. It seems like it's actually getting brighter out now. Because we've been spending so long outside talking to Sambor that, uh, things were good. That most of the night was... Oh, is that straight up Orion's belt right there? Oh, that would be really cool if this is actually like a superimposed full-on actual place. So yeah, we do wonder if uh, we just spent so long talking to Sambor that... Oh, we better... You know, we'll, we'll deal with that in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, we did spend so long talking to Sambor that we would believe that the night's mostly over now. It's really not dark at all. Ooh, you know what we got? 
Got some porridge. That was surprisingly less yummy and foodying than we wanted. That's fine. We're just gonna eat some apples real quick. Apple chicken. Oh my gracious, that looks scurry! Leap into Sam Boris house or not. That's that's cool too, we guess. Where is your door? Uh huh. Sam Odiagast. Hello, we've talked to Sambor. In your real sort sweetest like a jar of honey. Oh, you did tell me a lot about my uncle though. Story about the Lord of the Orchards. Unexpectedly good storytelling skills, doesn't he? He really does. Downright astonished. One time, I swear, he went for over a year without speaking a single word. But when we were sitting by the fire, he remembered some anecdote, laughed out loud, and began his tale. Went from total mute to master of ceremonies. The narrative was so gripping, it was hard not to listen. He even did voices. But after finishing, he became si silent again. I never fully understood that side of, side of him. The theater genius trapped in the body of a bear wrestler. He actually asked me to give you something... Uh, oh, really? And what was that? A knuckle sandwich. Huh. Oh, so are you going to deliver? Do you want me to? <laughs> oh, sure. I love people punching me in the face. Oh, nice. Don't. Samford just says, but if he asks, tell him you knock me out cold. Just out of curiosity, what did Samford tell you about becoming part of the pack? Say so you're looking for the best to recruit and he was the obvious choice. Yeah, it seems like something you would say. Isn't that the truth? Not a pleasant memory, but I believe you deserve to know the whole story. We didn't recruit him. Well, I guess we did. Jordan did. But that wasn't a matter of choice. When Jordan and I started following his mission together, we were rather successful. Everything was going smoothly. Too e easy, even. We were doing a lot of good, putting many well-deserved smiles on oppressed faces. That's when we let our guard down. There was a secret guild formed by a, men, uh, by a few higher-ranking knights and barons. We called them the Vendors. A bunch of really heartless bastards. Their most lucrative business was selling living merchandise. And no, I'm not talking about animals. Slavery was strictly forbidden in that realm. The queen was adamant about it. And, well, the Vendors had their own set of rules to follow. They caged them like cattle, mostly women and children, forced the, to fight r rats for the poor little rations they were being given in the damp dungeons they were held in. The guild preferred quantity over quality, so they didn't care about disease and they didn't tend to wounds. Sometimes it took them weeks to get the dead out of the cages. Survival of the fittest, or rather outlasting the least fortunate. It was simply horrible. If you ask me, all of the damned guild deserved a cruel and slow death. But that wasn't how we operated. Jordan made it very clear from day one we were never to take a life. Most That was the most important of the rules. Okay, whatever. Anyway, we managed to get everyone out. The carriage is full of broken people. Even the horses kept their heads low, mourning. The despair was in the air, and even more poisonous than the stench of rotting flesh. And in all that, we forgot to make ourselves safe as well. And the mercenaries caught us and brought, uh, brought to the torture chamber a gruesome place, and even had a room hidden inside. The vendors weren't in the patient mood, so they sent their worst torturer away. Right away, it was horror st I was horror-struck, truly petrified, could barely breathe. The Orton didn't say a word, just looked at me. His eyes were relaxed but focused. I realized he wanted me to be as calm as well, but I couldn't. He went first. The torturer strapped the Orton into a chair and just started swinging. His fists were like anvils. Every hit drew blood or broke bones. In a matter of seconds, the Orton's face looked like a bloody... This is who Sambor was, isn't it? Only thing poking through was his smile. It was one of many times I wondered if he was even human. The torturer quickly realized that he needed different tools for such a unique specimen. Went to grab his blade. Then Jordan started talking. He was making offers, one after another, but the torturer kept carving his torso like he was preparing a steak to be grilled. So much blood I could taste it in my mouth. I wanted to pass out just to run away from all that, but I couldn't. My heart was pounding too fast. Suddenly the torturer stopped and looked at me and back at Jordan. This is one thing he said. If you're lying, you're going to watch me do the same to him. I was about to puke, but Jordan just nodded, so he untied me. He untied us both and helped us escape. There were more mercenaries on the way, heavily armed. No one stopped us, even when they were terrified of that guy. We managed to get out in one piece. Well, we managed to get out alive. Jordan's wounds wouldn't heal for weeks. And even after that, he was scarred so badly. It looked like he had chainmail stitched to his skin. We would escape death, and its emissary became one of us. It was Sambor. My gods. Jeez. The nightmares of that night never stopped. How could you want a person like that amongst your troop? 
think I wanted a cutthroat anywhere near me. I couldn't get a wink of sleep around him for days. I was constantly watching my back, watching his every move. That's simple. Jordan made a deal with him, promising the only thing that mattered. Money. A whole lot more than what the guild was paying him. And a cut for every heist we did. It's not the way Jordan did things. He was a master liar, but when he gave someone his word for real, he never backed down. Besides, we later found out Sabmor wasn't evil in his nature. He was just a true soldier. Did what was asked of him. Jordan spent hours talking to him. Talking with him, explaining our rules of conduct. Sabmor never broke any of them, not once. Your lives, I mean, I don't think we'll be able to handle that. Honestly, I hope you'll never have to. I've been through a lot, and after all these years, the thing I wish most is to have a boring, steady life. Uh, there's always something to do. Next request won't be boring. What do you want? Barowo. Bring back a scythe. Nice. Okay. From Ida. And it's daytime now. Look at that. Excellent. Wonderful. Magical. Spectacular. Let's go back home. Where is Barowo? Oh, it's literally across the river. Well, so, never mind. One moment. We'll just pop to the other side real quick. But not... Yeah, we'll just take the bridge, actually. It's it's better. Alright. Actually, we're gonna... We're gonna jump in the water real quick. Get some cleanliness. And now go across the bridge. It, it takes really long to go across the water. Which is why they have a perk for it. Oh, come on, we just... Yeah, there, boom. Take that. Alright, so now that we have literally been up all night, let's keep going! And be up all day. So... Ida is in here. Let's just walk on into their house. And that's Milena. That's Follybore. Here's Ida. Who you got Scythe? I want a fair and square one. Yeah, the little snake didn't even tell you about that. Huh? Figures. He only wanted me to get a Scythe back. It's my Scythe now. Okay, what can I do to get your Scythe then? How much for the Scythe? What's the game? Game of riddles, how's it played? I tell you three riddles, you must answer them. One mistake and the game is over. If you win, you get the scythe. And if you lose, I'll go easy on it. If you don't, you lose, you don't lose. Okay, sure. We're horrible with letters. Disappears the second you say it. Silence. Okay. Feed me and I live. Give me drink and I die. What am I? Fire. Um, okay. If I fly but have no wings, I cry but have no eyes. Where I go, darkness follows me. You're a cloud. Okay, sweet. Thanks for the game. We had fun. Let's go back and give Unigast his thing. Because we guess that's just, like, totally fine. Come on, man. We just took a bath. Okay, you know what? This time we will take a swim. We'll just waste the time. Oh, wow. We don't walk on the water anymore. We actually, like, straight up, like, tread water. That's good. We like that. Alright, and, and we don't swim, we don't water walk nearly so slow either. Alright, any gust. Whoops! Um, sorry about that. Yep, so... Let's go talk to the Castellan. And... Give him his sight back. Got your scythe. Wake up, old man. Uh, no troubles. <laughs> Might have left a teensy tiny detail out, you don't say. With our wits, you're brighter than I was. Was there ever any doubt? Uh, 
Yeah, we are Jordan's nephew. Sambor is looking for you. Uh, then told to at, be, he asked about the one with the funny eyes and stupid face. We'll prolong the humiliation any longer. New level of diplomacy? We didn't know that was a thing. Let's look at that. Kablam! Equality 90s Nickelodeon Entertainment, baby! Flirting, Dynasty Repeat. Oh, we kind of do like that. Uh... We're gonna do Dynasty. You know, flirting takes time, but, it, you know, you can still do it. Wait for the next summer. Talk to Sambor. But we don't really want to talk to Sambor right now. We'll do that next episode. Now, we're gonna go on back. We're gonna chill and enjoy our spoils for the day. Thanks a bunch, everybody, for coming. If you liked what you saw, remember to like, subscribe, and do all those other lovely things that help support the channel. Go on down to our link tree link in the description. Head up all of the various different other place, places we do stuff. Consider, please, sharing this video everywhere you can to help, uh, you know, get our stuff around. And if you're an especially attractive and well-educated watcher, seriously, consider heading on down to the Patreon via our link tree link in the description. And pledge even just $1 a month to help support the cause and everything we do. Oh, look, it's more Clay stuff. And join the mighty, mighty ranks of Mike the Microphone, our number one patron of all time, and Tollpans are our number one watcher of all time. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Stay safe, stay inside, stay healthy, and of course, remember to help each other. Bye.